but you brought up a good point, so, and it's a difficult point to talk about, but let's start. What do you think about the safety of these new drugs? How do they compare with other immunotherapies and other therapies out there like ipilimumab and IL-2? Well, I, I think because we all grew up in the IPI first era and had to learn to deal with the toxicity first from IL-2, um, then with ipilimumab, um, although the anti-PD-1 antibodies are not completely benign, I think their toxicities are much more easily manageable than the prior immunotherapies. Um, but the question is, how do you manage the toxicities when you combine these agents? Because again, you're getting more efficacy when you combine them, but you're also getting more toxicity. And I think that's my biggest concern as we move these agents through clinical trials where they now become the standard of care, I'm concerned with the management of toxicity that it's not gonna be adequate and patients may suffer undue, undue, undue effects secondary to toxicity and not get the full benefit because they'll either be stopped early mm -hmm. because the, the toxicity management is that difficult or they may have such an adverse event that you just can't continue. So what are the toxicities, Dr. Joseph, with uh, PD-1? All of our all of the people listening to us talk, uh, like we're holding mm -hmm. on to some mm -hmm. valuable information. <laughs> Can you tell me about the toxicities yeah, sure. that you've seen with your patients sure. on PD-1 therapy? So, you know, PD-1 is, is probably the, the easiest drug I've ever administered as an oncologist, I would say. Um, you know, that might not be saying much because most of our drugs are pretty toxic, but um, you know, for the vast majority of my patients, um, there um, is is very very little managing. Actually, um, there there are there are issues. Rash is, is is a big one, but it's not a dose limiting type of thing that has to be stopping the drug. Thyroid is a big issue. Uh, or happens a lot, but it's again hypo easy. To, hypo, or hi, I mostly or see hypo. hypo. Yeah, um, but and you can see hypo. You can, you can. Um, and then fatigue is always there, but you're on. You're, you're never. You know, again, it's not dose limiting. So um, those are the biggies for 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 PD one. I know the pneumonitis was a worry at the beginning, um, and I still think it is going to be an issue probably for patients with lung cancer. Uh, but with melanoma, maybe non-smokers is maybe less less of an so issue. So I tell my patients that. This is such an easy drug to give that it's really easy to forget that there is toxicity. Mm -hmm. How does a patient with the pneumonitis present? Dr. Kaufman? Well, fortunately I haven't had too many of those, but I, you know, I think in general they can present with respiratory symptoms, shortness of breath, cough, you know, difficulty breathing. Um, and I think that a patient who's on PD-1, you have to have kind of a high uh, suspicion of that you might be dealing with pneumonitis in a patient who presents with any kind of upper respiratory kind of complaint. Um, and one thing that we are doing at our center also, I think that many of these new treatments, and they may not be known in the community, so uh, many of our patients uh, you know, who come to our institution in Salt Lake City live nine hours away from where we are. So if they, then, if they develop an upper respiratory uh, illness, they often go to their local um, uh, clinic or local emergency room, and I think that it's important then to make the staff there aware that this may be related to the treatment that they're on. So we've actually also developed uh, mechanisms that we actually have patients that has a small card saying that that I am on this drug and this is uh, can happen as a side effect from the drug. If I present at your emergency room, be aware of this, and we have our phone numbers on there, so they can contact us. But it really is sort of a, sort of a physician peer to peer that I'm. We're not trying to have patients telling you what to do, but we're really informing you that this can happen. I think that that also will be important, especially in melanoma, but also many other uh, diseases now, as many of these immunotherapies are being developed. That uh, physicians out there may not be fully aware of all the side effects. And I found that the pneumonitis, I agree, is rare, easily treatable mm -hmm. uh, with holding the drug or with steroids and really uh, has not led to this uh, hospitalizations for these patients. But Dr. Pavlik came up with a, a good point that 
we need to move forward then from just single agents. Uh, so, Dr. Pavlik, what do we know now about combining therapies? Well, tell us a little bit about. Well, you know, obviously the most mature data is on the combination of ipilimumab with nivolumab, um, but there are other immunologic agents that are now being combined, TVEC with ipilimumab, TVEC with pembrolizumab. Um, we did the studies with ipilimumab and GMCSF as another immunoadjuvant. Um, and in contrast to the IPI with GMCSF, where the GMCSF actually looked like it presented with a more favorable toxicity profile, some of the other agents may in fact enhance the toxicity. For example, when you take ipilimumab and nivolumab, we've seen a large percentage of our patients get some profound diarrhea. Um, the, the diarrhea presents in the same way it does with IPI. However, I think it's much more rapid in onset. Um, you need to be aware of this because you have to intervene early. It's completely manageable, but if, you don't, if you're not aware of how quickly you need to intervene, it can get out of hand. The other thing we've seen is rashes um, and uh, the endocrinopathies, especially mm -hmm. the thyroid issues with the hyper and the hypo. Although, you know, I don't think it's always the case that you're going to see more toxicity. It's the importance of doing these clinical trials because the ipilimumab and GMCSF trial you spoke about actually saw a decrease in some of the toxicities, particularly the GI toxicities associated with ipilimumab. Um, we've recently started a trial of ipilimumab in IL-2, and um, there's been a smaller study of this done in the past, which didn't really identify any um, unexpected or increased frequency of toxicities. And we're kind of seeing the same thing in our trial now. And it makes me wonder if the IL-2 is promoting regulatory T cells, which may be suppressing some of the ipilimumab responses. And maybe one of the reasons these actually work better together is you can actually give more of the ipilimumab. Um, so I, I think we have to really study this and understand the toxicity profiles, um, because I don't think they're always going to necessarily be, be worse when you add two immunotherapy agents together. I think ultimately, ultimately with this also, what we want to see in our patients, we want to see responses. We want to say that they have added response by adding these agents together. And I think that uh, with that as well, on an in individual patient basis, uh, I think it's going to be important then to understand which two agents or three agents together will have the best response in each patient. Um, I think um, especially with the injectable oncolytic immunotherapies, we know that when we combine TVEC with ipilimumab in the study that is currently ongoing, there were no dose limiting toxicities from that, which I think is reassuring. And uh, at least uh, initially in a very small number of patients, the response rate was very good. So I think that as we move forward with this, it's, it will be important for us to understand how to combine these, but also to try to combine them in such a way that we get the greatest response with the least amount of toxicity for our patients. Agreed, and I'm hopeful that this higher response rate will mimic what we've seen in the survival curves with the single agent immunotherapies where the response rate is there and then a specific subgroup has long-term durability. So if we can increase that response rate, maybe we can increase that long-term dur durability and long-term survival advantage. But let's not forget about